What is going on, Wake Up Wealthy listeners? Welcome back to the Wake Up Wealthy podcast. As usual, you've got myself, Brody Kern, and head coach Julian Rosen in the chair today, ready to bring some value to you. Julian, what are we talking about? Dude, I don't know. Nah, we're going to talk. <laughs> Dude, <I don't> know. <laughs> just kidding, just Jesus. kidding. We're talking about self-trust today. Self-trust is one of the one of the missing links that a lot of leaders who are building really big shit in their life, in their business. Um, I mean, there's this, this aspect of self-trust um, and going beyond just like the the who raw motivation aspect of it, but actually talking about it on a tactical level, how to manufacture self-trust, how to cultivate it and how to use it, how to use it to actually bring value to your life, to the marketplace. Um, and actually once you like, it becomes this magnetic superpower when you're really able to leverage it. And so a lot of people are out there thinking self-trust um, is a thing that some people are blessed with and some aren't. Some people think that confidence, self-trust and certainty are, are attribute, attributes that are given to others well, you know, maybe genetically they got fucked over and, and they missed out on the leadership gene or whatever. And it's just not true. Um, any attribute, including self-trust, including certainty, it, it, it comes as a result of reps. It comes from a result as a certain way of operating, living, breathing, making decisions. And so what we're going to cover today is how you can actually cultivate self-trust in yourself and f in a functional way and use it to see better results, to see the needle move forward in your life, in your bank account, in your body, all the things that are measurable and that matter to guys like us. Self-trust is a key component and a key ingredient. There we go. I'm down with that topic. So, you know, when we really look at it, like when we look at the words confidence or certainty or self-trust, like I think there's a lot of misconceptions around what that actually means, right? It's in a similar fashion to how people view ego, yeah. right? And so like in your, in your belief, how would you define those things? How would you define confidence? How, how would you define certainty? How would you define self-trust? Right. So, I mean, confidence is a state. Confidence is a physiological state that anybody can embody, right? And it, and it begins with control of the breath and awareness of the breath. It, be, it begins with control of the body and awareness of the posture of the body. It begins with, and I guess it ends with, the awareness of thoughts and the control of thoughts. Like that is truly what confidence is. Confidence is going into a situation, knowing who you are and having total control and awareness of yourself, right? And obviously we cannot always always manipulate outcomes, but like confidence is a state of knowing who you are and being really, really powered in your own self-awareness, being centered in your own self-awareness. Now, uh, confidence can be manufactured, right? If you're having a really, really bad day and you know you really need to turn it on, you can turn on confidence, right? And you can you can project it on other people. And then, you know, let's say you have to do it for a meeting. The second the meeting ends and the people leave, like you can go back to sulking. You can go back to a state of feeling like crap. Now, self-trust on the other hand, self-trust and certainty on the other hand, those are not just physiological states. Those don't just live in your body. Those must be cultivated. Those are literally entrained into your mind and body at a cellular level based off of who you choose to be on a daily basis. <laughs> oh, we're still okay. We got a guy blowing leaves literally at us. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so whatever lawn company is hired out there clearly doesn't give a fuck about people <laughs> podcasting because he just held his leaf blower straight up to the window. It's the middle finger of, of leaf blowing. It's a, it's a cutthroat industry. It's a, there's real dark side to it. We'll get into that on another. Uh, that's a whole other. That's a whole other podcast. Thing to unpack. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, the like, dark side of leaf blowing. <laughs> leaf blowing underground cage fights. <laughs> All right, let's realign it. Let's realign it, guys. Evan, realign it. So. Certainty, on the other hand, that begins, like that is a journey you go on with yourself. Certainty, and this is something Brody can speak on because it's something, it's literally why Wake Up Wealthy ticks. It's, it's why we've gotten past some of the challenging points is the certainty that Brody's been able to cultivate. Now, he wasn't born with it. It isn't something that he uh, can manufacture and then, like, and then it goes away. It's, it emanates from who he is based on the decisions he makes in his life, based on the decisions he makes from how he wakes up to how he, how he manages his morning, to how he treats his family, to how he treats his business, to how he treats his time, to how he treats his nutrition. And this is something that obviously we echo and something that we mirror as a team. And it, when, it's what makes our team so lethal, so profitable and uh, such a great company. But Again, certainty is all, uh, all related to like the person who wants to get in shape, right? Like you can't just be like, yeah, I'm in shape now, right? Like it starts as that decision, but then you have to honor that decision with how you wake up, when you wake up, 
how you eat, how you choose to nourish your body, how you choose to train, right? Like it is a journey you then go on and every step you take on that journey reaffirms the original decision you've made. So certainty, a lot of people think is a decision outside themselves to be made by other people saying, hey man, you're really certain that must be nice. And what Brody can attest to is no, certainty is something that you internally decide upon and then you make it a fucking point to honor that decision with the decisions you make, with the choices you make, with the lifestyle you live. And then it, uh, just like a fitness journey, it, it transforms, it evolves and it becomes very visible for other people. Yeah, absolutely. And so like, you know, certainty is something that it's tough to quantify, but when individuals have it, like Julian talks about all the time, it's fucking magnetic. When someone is certain in themselves and the mission that they're on, you absolutely know it the second that they walk into the room. And for me, when I look at certainty, because, you know, I have always carried a high level of it and it wasn't developed innately, but you know, when I try to break down, well, how did I end up at this point? How did I end up being so certain in everything that we were doing in the decisions that I was making and, and having the ability to trust myself, which is the topic of this podcast. And I think that like one of the unique things about my perspective in business and in the world is the way in which I objectify information. And because like emotional decisions don't serve anyone inside of business and in oftentimes inside of decision making, like, like decisions are very black and white for the most part, right? Everything is pretty objective and I'm someone who really values logic. And so when I'm looking at a decision, right, the something let's like, let's say a play I want to make in business. You know, a lot of individuals, they will have fear come up because it's the unknown. They've never done it before. And I have those fears come up. But the difference in about how I make decisions in business versus, you know, a lot of individuals that I meet is none of those fears or emotions or any of that factors into the way that I make decisions because I value logic and, and objectifying the information so much. Like it, it's a big part of my decision, decision making process is like, what does the logic tell us here? And so when we look at a decision in business, right, we're thinking about doing something that has a high level of risk, but also a great, you know, level of reward. Emotion doesn't serve this, right? If you objectify the information, it's like, okay, well, have people done this before? You know, most oftentimes, yeah, someone's taken a huge risk in business and they've taken the action and they've made the play and it's panned out, right? And so we know it can be done. And, and if another human being could do it, then there's a very good chance that I could do it. Now, in addition to that, even if I think, okay, if I'm being logical, can it fail? Yes, well, it could totally fail. I could completely flop. And then what happens? Well, you know, I could beat myself up. I could sulk. I could call myself a failure. I could judge myself. I could do all of these fucked up things. But eventually, I'm going to have to pick my ass up and just start again. And so if the next logical step is to pick back up and start again, I should probably cut down the time in which it takes me to do that and just do it immediately because there's no point or no value in fucking sulking for any period of time. And so let's look at our options here, right? You look at making a play and you can either, number one, it pans out because you know, like, well, yeah, if a human being has pulled it off, then you likely can too. And number two, if it doesn't, okay, it doesn't pan out. We already decided what is the next logical step. Well, that's just to pick back up and try again. So really you, the worst thing that can happen is you can be back at square one with a little bit more information about why it didn't work out. Right. And so then you can optimize, you can iterate and you can change your strategy in trying to move forward to that goal again. Now you see how, when I remove all the emotion out of that and I really look at it just plain and simple, what are the facts? When you start to do that inside of business, it allows you to make decisions much easier. It allows you to trust yourself because you already understand all of the possible outcomes and how none of them really matter, right? Like you aren't a failure because of uh, making a play flopped. You only become a failure when you apply all your conditioning and beliefs and emotions to that situation. Business is not emotional. Business is not emotional. It's totally mechanical. And so understanding those plays, seeing the chessboard, it allows you to have that self-trust. It allows you to make decisions that other individuals can't make because they are run by their fears. Whenever you objectify the information, you can make legitimate plays in business and not have to worry about the outcome because you understand that the end is secure. We say that a lot at Wake Up Wealthy. The end is secure because the next logical step is always to pick back up, try again, iterate until you succeed.
Yeah, we actually had a guy, a client in here yesterday, like walking through this exact same thing, talking about raising his prices uh, in his business. And, and when he was looking at this decision, whether to make it or not, it was all emotion and all fear. Well, I've never done that. What if clients leave? What if, uh, what if I offend my current clients? Like all this stuff. <clears throat> And then, like Brody said, we objectified the information. We just put it on a fucking whiteboard. We said, dude, this is, this is, it leads to, when you can do this one small price jump, it's going to end up being like around 30,000 extra dollars a year, right? He wants to grow his business. He wants to obviously automate it more, step away from it. So he's not a slave to it. You know, 30 extra K a year just from making this one small shift. And, but we also looked at kind of like the, what it could, like if it didn't go the way he thought it would, yeah, what, so like I, what he I could like lose out the, on. I, like this is a phenomenal example. Um, and so I would like to break the numbers down for the individual. So the client, you know, whoever's listening to this, the client that we had in here yesterday owns a barbershop. And typically his, he charges $35 for his haircuts. And, you know, he knew, he had already known that he kind of wanted to raise his prices, that he had thought about raising his prices, but he had a fear around doing so. Am I going to lose clients? Am I going to offend my clients? Like, what if people don't pay? Like, what if it turns out bad? And so he was telling himself a story about something that hasn't happened yet and something that likely isn't going to happen. And I said, okay, let's objectify it, right? Remove fear, remove emotion. Let's really look at what it is because what we, the instance that we were talking about, we were talking about raising the price of the haircut from $35 to $45. And he has a phenomenal service. He has, you know, he gives a phenomenal experience in there. He's really good at his job. It's worth $45, right? But I said, okay, worst case scenario, let's see what happens, right? let's say you're going to offend a bunch of people. Some people are going to leave. How much can we actually afford to lose? And he said, well, how do we figure that out? Right. And I said, okay, well, for raising the price, $10, that it, $10 is 28% of a $35 haircut. Right. And so if we're bumping the price up 28%, then we can afford to lose 28% of our clients and still break even. And then all of the new clients coming in moving forward, because we established that new clients coming in would just pay whatever they, they thought it was, right? The concern was, was the existing clients being given a price raise. And so I said, you know, how many clients do you have? have. He said seven or 800 clients. I said, do you really think that 28% of seven or 800 people are going to say, you know what? We don't want to do business with you anymore. You've given us a phenomenal experience up until this point, but because you want to charge us $10 more. I said, do you think that 28% of, you know, almost a thousand people are going to say that over $10. And he said, not a chance. And I said, okay, well, we just removed all emotion out of it. We showed you how much more money you're going to make by doing this price raise. We showed you that really there's no way for you to lose unless you thought that 29% of people, which is over the 28% that we, we decided, you know, the threshold was, I said, unless you think 29% of people are going to walk away, this is a good decision inside of your business. <clears throat> and it was a light bulb moment for him. He said, wow, man, when you break it down like that, like it totally makes sense. I'm going to implement this. And this is why it's important. Like that was a mechanical decision. That was a logical decision. All we had to do was see how the pieces were laid across the board and make an educated decision. But whenever you wrap the emotion and fear and, and the belief of self up in those decisions, it's an, nearly impossible to make decisions. And so that's why the objectification of the information inside of your business, inside of your de decision-making process is absolutely imperative. It's what allows you to have self-trust. It's what allows you to have certainty and self-belief. These aren't, you know, these super emotional things. It's like fucking be logical. Be logical with how you make decisions, with how you view yourself, with how you view your capabilities. Separate. Separate the emotional baggage from your next five decisions. And I promise you that you will be on fire. Yeah. And one thing to add to that is he goes, well, what do, uh, <clears throat> if someone asks why I'm raising the prices, what do I do? And we're just tell them the truth. Yeah. Like don't overthink it. Tell them the truth. And this goes for like your relationships, friendships, partnerships with it. Like if you have employees, like anything, the truth, the truth always fucking works. Tell them the truth. You're growing. This, this, this service has become more valuable because you've put more education, you've invested more in your education as a, as a barber, as a service provider, as a business owner, as a person, your time is becoming more valuable. And uh, yeah, prices need to reflect that. Just tell them the truth. And they'll either appreciate the truth or they'll either say, okay, cool, well, 
I'm going my own separate way. But that obviously clears the way for more aligned clients who value the service, right? And we've experienced that at Wake Up Wealthy, you know, and we've increased the prices of our services. We invest in ourselves as coaches, as business owners, um, because the, the information becomes more valuable. So we end up bottlenecking ourselves if we increase the value of our time and energy, but don't allow that to be reflected in, in the business we do. Yes. You know what I mean? So, you know, if, if you're in a similar spot and you know, this is resonating and you're also, but your mind and your emotions and your conditioning and your fears and your what if scenarios are going, well, well, what if someone pushes back? You just tell them the truth. The truth will get you out of a lot of situations that you think don't have solutions. I'll tell you right now, if you've ever had the thought, I wonder if I'm charging too little, uh, you likely are. Right, like it is, we oftentimes devalue ourselves and undervalue the services that we provide. Like we all get into business to serve individuals and nobody gets into business, you know, except for like some fucking internet scammers and say, you know what, I'm just gonna provide a shitty product. The key to good business is good product, good client experience, good client delivery and customer success. And most business owners know that, right? There is nothing more important to, to us as a company than the client experience, than the client delivery. Like I hold ourselves, I hold us to a very, 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 very high standard here at Wake Up Wealthy. For a $7,500 offer, I try to deliver a $75,000 life-changing experience. Like that is the way that I look at things. It's not about, it's not about making your money back. It's not about breaking even. It's, it's about nothing short of changing your fucking life. And regardless of what type of offer or service you are in, you should hold yourself to that type of standard. Because when you hold yourself to that type of standard, you're going to deliver that way. And when you deliver that way, you can charge whatever the fuck you want once you get over the fear of making the decision to raise your price. Yeah, and, and you know, the last thing as we start wrapping this up is like, whatever you decide, you'll find the ways to be right. You know what I mean? So if you decide that your your product isn't worth the the price change that you want to add to it because of some kind of fear you have in your head and that's the thought, that's the story you hold, life will mirror that back to you and you'll have people leave. You'll have people uh, not acknowledge your value because internally you're carrying that doubt inside too. You know, and it's something we were also talking about with our client is like, it's this, ins what makes Wake Up Wealthy so awesome is the inside out, but the outside in approach to, to success, right? Like we broke down the tactical approach he needs to take in order to make $30,000 more each year. But we were also going into the, the internal neurophysiological wiring of, of why the fear is there and how the fear will create the self-perpetuating limitations that he was actually holding on to. So he had to actually release the fear and release the story so that he could experience the, the expanded results as well. And so when you can combine that upgrade at a mindset level, when you can combine that mindset at a, at a belief level, when you can combine that mindset, body, spirituality, all of these expansions going on at the same time and pair it with proven business tactics. Because like Brody said, it's mechanical. It's, it's, it's cause and effect. There's, there's proven formulas in the world of business. And so we actually combine those with proven formulas within the world of performance and, and mindset and truly, truly freeing you from old belief systems that actually interfere with your action taking within business. And when you combine that little potion and stir it up, like that's what really brings the X factor and changes lives. So again, it's like, there's nothing wrong with you if, if you're one of those guys and you're like, you're overthinking this and you're doubting this and there are fears and there are stories like join the club. That's why we're here. That's why Wake Up Wealthy exists is to break that isolating story. But it's like, dude, shit works, man. Like there's, there's ideas you probably have in your head right now that will work. And no one outside of you is telling you you're not allowed to do them. It's, it's all an inside job. And so it's like, take the actions, make the decisions, optimize what doesn't work, shit you already know, but also do the inner work, man. Meditate, develop a morning routine, invest in coaching. You don't know what you don't know. You can't see what you can't see. Invest in people that can see those weak spots and bring them up so they become your strong suit. And when you do that, you can't lose. Beautiful, beautiful. So we covered, we covered a ton of dense stuff on today's episode. We also got in, got in the battle with the leaf blower. Um, Go kick his ass, Haas. Haas, get out there and kick that dude's ass. Got it. Yeah, okay. Haas yeah. has this super big leaf blower. Blow some away. <laughs> <laughs> leaf blower battles 2021. Jesus, man. 
Um, all right. If you're listening to this, we appreciate you for being here, and we ask you to share this podcast. We show up multiple times a week to deliver value to you inside of your life, inside of your business. All that we want and all that we wake up for every fucking day is to really get out here and help change men's lives. And so I hope that we have helped you in getting that done today and aiding in that process, and we will see you on the next episode. Bye. That one was...